Hello there! You know this top that I'm wearing? It is one of my favorite tops. I love the color black and what a lovely fabric. Well, the clothes which we wear are made of fabrics. You may have observed that the t-shirt that you wear for a sports class is of a different material altogether from the dress that you wear for a wedding in the family. Well, the fabric in your clothes is made from fibers which are obtained from either natural or artificial sources. And not just clothes. Fibers are also used for making a large variety of household articles. For example, mattresses, bed sheets, cushion covers, tablecloth, towels, etc. Can you think of some more? I'm sure you have a small list in your head already. And talking of fibers, we learn about the synthetic class of fibers in this segment. Welcome to the chapter on synthetic fibers and plastics. Well, there are essentially two kinds of fibers, natural fibers and synthetic fibers. And as the name suggests, natural fibers come from natural sources like plants and animals. For example, cotton, wool, silk, jute, flax and linen are all natural fibers. On the other hand, there are synthetic fibers, which are man-made fibers and synthetic fibers are made from various chemicals and each type of fibers will have its own distinct properties. The only limitation with synthetic fibers is that they do not absorb moisture very well and they can easily catch fire. Let us head a little deeper into the topic of synthetic fibers. Well, take a look at these two necklaces, right here. The first one is made of beads that are joined with the help of a thread. And the second one is made of a number of paper clips which are joined together to make a long chain. Do you spot any similarity between the two? Well, both these necklaces are actually chains formed by linking small units like beads and paper clips. And similar is the case with synthetic fibers. You see, a synthetic fiber is also a chain of small units joined together. Each small unit is actually a chemical substance. So, different synthetic fibers are made from different chemicals and each kind of synthetic fiber has its own distinct property. Now, these fibers are usually long and they are durable as well. But, like I told you a while back, they are actually not very effective in absorbing moisture and can easily catch fire. Now, when a substance has a single unit structure forming its particle, then it is known as a monomer. And when many such small units combine to form a large single unit, then it is called a polymer. Now, do you know that these words monomer and polymer have Greek origins? There are polymers that are made of two or more different kinds of units. For example, nylon. Its building blocks are a unit of amine, whose chemical formula is CHN, and adipic acid with the chemical formula CHO. Now, it is common knowledge that a finished product is prepared from raw materials. For example, if I were to make a painting, then the canvas, pencils, paints, paint brushes, among other things, would be my raw materials to make the final product, which is the painting. Similarly, scientists evolved this mechanism to polymerize the monomer of certain substances like rubber, silicon, that are obtained from trees with petroleum products such as ethane, propane, benzene, toluene, styrene, esters and others. And all of these materials combined are raw materials to produce synthetic fibers. Now it's time to refresh your memory. So, you have read in class 7 that silk fiber obtained from silk worm was discovered in China and was kept as a closely guarded secret for a long time. Now, the fabric obtained from silk fiber was very costly, but its beautiful texture fascinated everybody. And that is when human curiosity kicked in and attempts were made to make silk artificially towards the end of the 19th century. Scientists were successful in obtaining such a fiber. It had properties similar to silk and was known as rayon or synthetic silk. It was prepared from cellulose. 
Now, cellulose comes from cotton, wood, and other plant products. So, can rayon be considered as a natural polymer? Well, no. You see, even though cellulose is a natural polymer, but to obtain rayon fabric from it, cellulose needs to be subjected to extensive chemical treatment. Moving on, let us now look at the next synthetic fiber, nylon, and see how it has benefited the mankind. But before we get into the science of it all, here is some more interesting trivia for you. Nylon was first developed by an American scientist called Wallace Carothers for M.S. Dupont de Nemours and Company of America in 1931. Now, nylon is another man-made polymer. In fact, it is one of the strongest synthetic plastic materials that can be molded into any shape. Now, in 1931, it was made without using any natural raw material. This means no plant or animal-based raw material was used in its production. It was prepared from coal, water and air. So it became the first fully synthetic fiber. Now, all these synthetic fibers like rayon, nylon, polyester and acrylic are some of the major synthetic fibers. There are some others too, like lycra or spandex, which are highly elastic. And as we discussed, these synthetic fibers are more durable and affordable, which makes them more popular than natural fibers. But here is something to remember. Synthetic fibers behave differently than natural fibers. They melt on heating. So this is actually a disadvantage of synthetic fibers. So avoid wearing synthetic clothes while dealing with fire, like while working in the kitchen or in a laboratory, or when you're bursting crackers during festivals. And with that, we finish this section on synthetic fibers. We should take a break here for now, but when we meet next time, we should learn about another material that we come across very often, almost every day. Join me in the next segment. Bye for now. Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.